Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconductor materials. So after watching this video, you will get to know like why we are selecting direct band gap material in some situations and why we are selecting indirect band gap semiconductor material in some applications. So that you will get to know after watching this video. So before I explain you why should we select those materials, first you need to understand what are the basic characteristics which is there with those materials. So let me explain you that by energy band diagram first. So here, see, I'll be explaining you energy band diagram with respect to momentum. So on horizontal axis, we are having momentum. On vertical axis, we are having energy. If you observe, this is valence band by red color and this is conduction band that is there by dark color. So, energy gap in between conduction band and valence band that is forbidden energy gap that we all know, right? Now, see here what happens is as if material absorbs energy. If semiconductor material that absorbs energy, then what will happen? Here, charge carriers electrons from valence band it will move inside conduction band like if i say here we are having one electron so that electron that will get shifted in conduction band if it absorbs energy right if electron absorbs energy then it will move inside conduction band and here in direct band gap, if you observe valence band and conduction band, both are aligned with respect to momentum, right? If material, if semiconductor material releases the energy, right? In that case, electrons from conduction band that will get recombined with holes which are there inside valence band, right? And here, major thing is what? Here, valence band and conduction band both are aligned with respect to momentum. So, here whenever electron is absorbing energy or as if electron is releasing energy, at that time it will not change its momentum or you can say it will not change frequency. See, here in semiconductor when we talk about momentum, so momentum is also having relation with frequency, right? So, as if you talk about change in momentum, so, change in momentum will happen in indirect band gap or change in frequency that will happen in indirect band. But in direct band gap semiconductor, as if electrons are absorbing energy and as if electron moves inside conduction band, at that time its momentum will be same and its frequency even will remain same. But in indirect band gap, as if electron is moving from valence band to conduction band, if it is moving from valence band to conduction band, right, by absorbing energy, at that time, if you observe its momentum is getting changed, its momentum is getting shifted, right. So, that is the major thing which is happening in direct band and indirect band gap. In direct band gap, when electron is having transition from valence band to conduction band by absorb, ab with the absorption of energy, at that time, its momentum will be fixed its frequency will be fixed, its wavelength will be fixed, right. But in case of indirect band gap, when electrons absorbs energy as if it goes into conduction band, at that time there will be shift in momentum, there will be deviation in frequency, there will be deviation in its wavelength. That is the major thing which is happening. Now, because of that, there are few essential parameters that you need to understand. Let me explain you all those parameters one by one. See, here as I have told you, in direct band gap, the electron shifts from Ev to Ec or vice versa. See, valence to conduction band that will happen in case of electron absorbs the energy. If electron moves from valence to conduction band, at that time it will absorb the energy. If electron moves from conduction band to valence band, means there will be recombination. At that time, it will be releasing energy, right? So, at that time, here there will be no change in momentum or frequency or wavelength. While in indirect band gap, 
as if electron shifts from valence band to conduction band or vice versa at that time it will be changing the momentum at that time it will be changing the frequency or wavelength that you can say now let us try to understand second interesting part see in direct band gap the direct recombination take place with the release of energy equal to energy difference in between recombining particle so here in direct band gap what happens when there is a shift from conduction to valence or valence to conduction band at that time that will happen as per the exit difference in between energy state let me explain you that see here i am having one electron right so this electron let us say it is having energy state e1 right now this electron moves over here let us say here it is having energy state e2 so here as if this electron moves from e1 to e2 at that time it will be absorbing how much energy exit difference of this e1 minus e2 that will be exit difference right so that is the basic meaning a direct recombination take place with the release of energy equal to the energy difference between recombining particle but here when it comes to indirect band gap at that time there is one basic thing that you need to understand see due to relative difference in the momentum first the momentum is conserved by the release of energy so first there will be momentum conservation right and that will be done with the release of energy and only after both the momenta aligned themselves and recombination occurs accompanied by the release of energy so here there are two things which is happening one is momentum conservation see momentum conservation is very very essential right see what happens you see here as if i say electron is over here now if we are applying energy let us say here we are having energy state e1 now if you apply energy up to e2 right which is energy state over here so this difference is e2 minus e1 if you apply this much amount of energy then it is not like this electron will move from here to here right why the reason is here there is a deviation in momenta so because of there is a deviation in momentum en uh, energy conservation is essential but along with that momenta conservation also comes into the picture so first what it does is first it will try to accompany its momenta from here to here once that momenta comes over here after that if you have some energy which is the difference in between these two then only this electron can move over here means first momenta conservation that comes into the picture at that time also there will be some sort of energy which is required after that if you apply some another energy then it will move from here to here means in total you can say compared to direct band gap in indirect band gap you need to have more energy why the reason is here momentum alignment is not there right so that is the major thing which you need to understand now see because of this what happens the probability of radiative recombination is high in direct band gap why the reason is directly that electron is shifting from valence to conduction and conduction to valence as per the basic difference but in indirect band gap you need to have higher than this difference of energy so obviously if you need to have higher than that difference of energy then probability of radiative recombination will be low right so here probability of uh, generation and recombination it is not only about recombination for generation also same thing happens right so here probability of radiative recombination and absorption uh, will be also having lower probability right compared to uh, compared to uh, direct band gap so here in indirect band gap we are having lower probability of recombination compared to direct band gap right and as probability is high with direct band gap you will be observing efficiency factor is also high 
and as efficiency factor is high in optical sources we are using direct band gap semiconductor materials like in led in laser we use direct band gap semiconductor materials like gallium arsenide while see probability of radiative recombination radiative recombination remember that is low over here in indirect band gap so we are not using this in optical sources why the reason is in optical sources what we need to do we need to have higher radiative recombination right like as if you have led then what is the purpose of led it should glow and to have that glow what you need to have there has to have radiative recombination right if it happens then you will be having higher intensity of light but here a probability with indirect band gap is low that's why we don't use silicon and germanium type of uh, material in optical sources right while gallium arsenide that we use it in optical sources why the reason is it is direct band gap so in that efficiency factor will be high for radiative recombination right so in short here see first you need to understand this energy band that is there with respect to momentum so in direct band gap here valence band and conduction band those are aligned with respect to momentum in indirect band gap those are not aligned as those are not aligned in indirect band gap you need to have higher energy relatively see here direct energy difference that you need to give to have change in state of electron from one state to another state simply you can say e2 minus e1 that difference will make sure there will be transition of this electron from here to here but that will that will not happen over here in indirect band gap why the reason is first there will be an uh, there will be momentum conservation so for momentum conservation you need to have some energy you see i have mentioned that due to relative difference in momentum first momentum is conserved by release of energy after that once both are aligned you can say okay now difference in energy will make sure to have recombination right so that is how things are there and because of that you can directly understand okay here simply difference of energy is there so probability of radiative recombination is high and here it will be low and as probability of radiative recombination is high we use this in uh, we use this in optical sources right while silicon and germanium that we use that we don't use it in optical sources right we use it in uh, semiconductor devices like diode in transistor in many devices we use silicon and germanium it is not like we are not using it but for radiation purpose we don't use silicon and germanium remember this i hope you have understood this still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video